is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so excited about today's episode because I'm going to be showing you how to get free plants from your local grocery store. This is a video that I've really wanted to do for a long time. It kind of recycled back around when it came time to getting our hydroponic setups going again. It kind of comes around every single year. I think, should I do that episode? Should I do that episode? And I don't really have a reason not to. I just don't have time to, but I made time because I think it's such a valuable lesson for all of you to get free plants. So many of us are on a budget or we want to extend the life of, um, of a plant and you can get free plants from your local grocery store. So in this episode, I'm going to show you how. What you want to do is you want to go to a grocery store. Um, most grocery stores will have a produce section that sells herbs. This is the secret folks. Herbs are very easy to propagate. In fact, so easy that I often say that you really don't ha ever have to buy more than one plant ever. Or if you start from seeds, you really only have to ever have to buy one pack of the seeds because after that point in time, you can pretty much take, take a cutting from that plant and turn it into additional plants. And if those plants go outside and die, take a cutting before they die, move it indoors, grow it indoors, and then take a cutting and move it outdoors. You should never, ever have to buy a plant ever again after this video. And so what you wanna do is you wanna go check out your local grocery store. When it comes to uh, your herbs, these are going to cost about $1.90 to $2.50 a pack at your local grocery store. But there's a but, and that is many of these uh, herbs here have a very short shelf life. And often grocery stores will, sell, will actually throw them out before their shelf life expires. This does one thing. It allows you to simply go to your local grocery store and say, hey, is there any fresh herbs or is there any herbs that you're throwing out um, from your fresh produce section? And so they'll walk back and we actually, I was able to get two packets for free. The other packets I had to buy because they didn't have them. So you can buy them, but a lot of times you don't have to. Um, these herbs here, one was basil. Basil has a really short shelf life. So typically if this doesn't sell in about two to three days, they'll pitch it, which is crazy because it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. The leaves are still nice and, and uh, green. That's one thing you want to look for. Um, there's no blackening on the stems. That's another thing you want to look for. Um, if they blacken, that means they've really gone a little bit too long. But another thing too is there's a lot of herbs like this. Uh, this is a, a poultry blend. Uh, there's a poultry blend that they had that has sage. It's a little limp, but it's still got great color. See the stems? Great green color. There's nothing wrong with it. The tips are a little dry, but this has probably only been in there for maybe two and a half, three days. And the guy just would like, he was just throwing them in a, in a, in a bucket, getting ready to pitch them. Um, there's some rosemary here. Rosemary is an extremely easy one to propagate. And then there is some thyme. Again, nothing wrong with these. I personally have no clue why they were throwing them out other than they may have been there like past the three day mark. And that's probably why. Um, I did buy some nice fresh rosemary because this rosemary was getting a little, it was getting a little past its prime. So I bought some nice fresh rosemary to, to have some good cuttings with because the fresher, the better obviously. But you, I'm proving that you can do it for free because I know people are gonna say, well, you bought this for $1.90. That doesn't really make it free. This was free. All I had to do was ask them if they were throwing any out. I got this for free, folks. You can do it too. Um, and then I got for free, some mint. I don't know what's wrong with this. Um, it looks perfectly fine to me, but they were throwing it out. They were really throwing this stuff out. They go through every single day and throw out stuff that is bruised, that is old, that is past date. Again, there's no expiration on this. It smells great. It's very plump. Um, and again, all I had to do was ask for the produce manager. And I said, look, is there anything you're throwing out? <laughs> I'll take it. And he gave me just a big box of stuff. So uh, yeah, perfectly fine. Um, the tips are a little on the brown side, but that that is, um, you know, that's to be expected. So we're just gonna, we're gonna fix that. And I'll show you how to fix that really quickly. Cause you do wanna make sure you cut off any of that brown stuff that will not propagate well. So once you get your plants, what you want to do is you wanna make sure that you have 
a very sharp knife. This uh, is just a, an X-Acto blade. You can do this with a razor blade, anything like that. This will be very important to making uh, your life easier when it comes to propagating. So coming in close, I'm gonna show you how to propagate. And uh, we're going to be actually using, we're gonna be using rock wool cubes to do it. You don't have to use rock wool cubes. You can put them directly into soil. Make sure it's a sterile potting mix because some of these ones, like your rosemary, will take some time to propagate because they can take up to three or four weeks to set roots, but your basil, your mint, they should quite literally start setting roots within five, six, maybe seven days at most. And so you can put them into soil. You can also use sand. Sand is another great propagation method. It just has to stay damp. As long as you have a medium that stays damp, you can pretty much propagate. My personal favorite is rock wool though. It holds onto, uh, it holds onto moisture very well, allows moisture, to, uh, excess moisture to drain freely. It's just a very great growing method, but these can run you a little bit. I mean, this, this block or this, uh, pack here was about $11 for all these. So again, it's not terrible, but this is a cost. You can do it for free. Again, sand is free. You can find any beach and grab it. Um, <laughs> or a 50 pound bag of sand is like, $3 at your local hardware store. So I'm still showing you different ways to do it for free, even though this method is not 100% free by a purist standpoint. So coming in close, I'm gonna show you how to prep your cuttings and then uh, we're gonna get them ready to start propagating. Let's go. So the first thing we're gonna do is just drop in our rock wool into our pH balanced, uh, pH of 5.5 water. Again, get yourself some pH strips these will honestly be such a lifesaver so many times. So we're just dropping our rock wool into our 5.5 pH water so that we can have a good quality, uh, a good quality growing environment for our cuttings. All right, so we're gonna prep our cuttings here. This is the mint. Mint propagates very easily. I just grabbed two pretty good specimens here. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut just a little bit below a leaf node here. So these are leaf nodes where leaves pop out and we're going to cut on a diagonal. Diagonal really helps to propagate. And then we're going to remove that set, that first set of leaves. Then what we're going to do is we're going to count how many leaf nodes we have. Uh, we have one, two, three, and kind of like a tuft up here at the top. I really only want about two and no more than three. So um, I've got one, two, and then a tuft up at top. So that is a good quality cutting right there that's going to root very well. Too many, and they don't need all these leaves. All these extra leaves um, tend to tend to kind of mess things up a little bit with the, the propagation. Um, they just, they kind of tend to stress the plant out. So by removing these leaves, it's gonna allow the plant to focus more on setting roots. So, and you don't want a super long cutting too. So for this instance, I might bring this up here. You don't need a whole lot of uh, you don't need a whole lot of space for them to root. So one, two, and that's probably good. So I'm going to leave that. So those are my mint cuttings. Let's do something like basil. So here's the basil. It is very easy to propagate basil. In fact, you can probably propagate numerous plants from this just this one here. I'm going to cut on a diagonal. With basil, you want to leave a little bit more space. You want to leave about about an inch or so from the uh, the next leaf node there and you want to still clip back a lot of those leaves it does not need that many to propagate and it's really going to stress that plant out so cut, take all those big ones off leave like one or two sets of leaves this is going to be a great plant to propagate and also what we've done is as you can see with the the end here being kind of brown that's kind of why we trim it up too so we trim it up so that so that we take off all of that old, dry, woody growth. That does not root very well at all. So now we've got this nice, tender, new growth here. Tender, new growth roots very well. So remove all those leaves, and this one is done. So all we're going to do with the rosemary, since there's really no leaf nodes, all we're going to do is just pick a slightly, uh, a slightly aged piece of growth. You get some of these new ones here. They're really, really flimsy. These can root, but sometimes because they're so soft, they can they can tend to dry out. So we can try these and see how they do. But generally I have luck, I have better luck with older, slightly more mature growth like this here. And so all we're going to do in both instances, we're going to simply take off, 
just simply peel off these leaves and they kind of grow almost like a pine tree. And all we want is just about an inch and a half, two inches of bare stem. And that right there is a, is a great cutting. So now you're kind of getting the same idea here. Here's sage. Now this one's a little limp. So we got to kind of pick and choose what we're going to do here with this. I personally think this one might be a little too far gone, but maybe once we get it into some, uh, some moisture, it'll kind of perk up a little bit. In this case here, really no sense in keeping these leaves. It's so limp that I'm going to do two, I'm going to get two cuttings out of here. And even though I cut this one at the top, there is some nice sturdy growth down here because what can happen is if the, if the, uh, if the vascular system collapses, the veins, um, basically are what carry water up to the leaves. If that vascular system collapses, that's what makes it go limp. Oops. That's what makes it go limp. So you want something that's nice and sturdy. And since this is older, I, um, I'm still going to throw this in and it does have some leaves. So it will form new growth out of here. It'll, it'll form the roots out of here and the new growth will just continue to grow here and out of these side shoots. So it doesn't always have to be a cutting like this, but I'm going to root both of those and see kind of what happens there. And time is exactly the same way as rosemary. This one we're going to get a lot of cuttings out of because you really don't need that much to get a cutting. We're just going to take them and strip off the leaves. And that's our cutting right there. That is a great quality cutting. And that, I don't see any problem not getting to root. All right, and we're in the final stretch here. So we've got our cutting, and all we're going to do is just dip the stem in a little bit of honey. Honey has a very low pH of around four, and this is very acidic, which actually acts as a natural antimicrobial and antifungal uh, solution here. This is going to sterilize the cutting and allow it to root better. This is not necessarily a rooting hormone, although you can use rooting hormones. I don't have any problem getting these to root without one, but you can buy some. I'll post a link in the description box below. Right down there, I'll post one to a good quality rooting hormone that uh, is sold by Bonide. All we're going to do is just stick that in there. Again, you want to just dip these, just dip the tip in. Really just helps to helps to sterilize the cut, keep bacteria and fungi from getting in, and uh, helps it take root a little better. So there you go, there is how you can get free plants from your local grocery store. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to throw a huge like up there. It really helps this channel grow and helps spread this video around to more people that could use the information. And also, if you have a friend that is interested in starting a garden or uh, is, is really into growing herbs, make sure you send this video over to them. I know there's a lot of people out there that don't wanna, you know, they wanna experience gardening without having to spend the money to, to get a garden started. This is a great way to get their feet wet, not to mention with the off season being upon us, I can't tell you how nice a windowsill herb garden is to get a person into gardening. I know it's kind of the gateway, uh, kind of the gateway drug, if you will, to getting into gardening because it's right at your disposal. There's no weeds. It's super easy to maintain, and it's just something that uh, that everyone can use every day of their life. So I really hope that you uh, that you spread this video around. I know there's so many people that could use it, and I'm just really glad that you tuned in for this episode. I'm always so grateful for your support. So thank you so much for watching through to this point, and also thank you so much for throwing a like up there. If you have not yet subscribed, make sure to do it. That is a great idea. If you have not yet subscribed, you're definitely gonna wanna do it because we have so much content, like I said, coming out very soon and in the near future. Very exciting content on the horizon, and you're not going to want to miss it. I promise you that. So make sure to subscribe. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. And we'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.